Your son is so considerate. He will. What did he do? Because I told him that I wanted to spend time with his mother and he fell right asleep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He is considerate. <laughs> Dear child. So tell me. What? How is my little bouquet owner doing, huh? Great. Don't laugh, okay? But catching it really made me feel like our wedding is going to be next. Catching it? Dixie, you hope practically slam dunked it in your face. <laughs> no one else had a chance. Yes, it's true. It really is going to happen. Isn't it? Yes. Soon. Very soon. We will be Mr. and Mrs. Happily Ever After, Mark. Palmer Cortland, chairman of the board of Cortland Electronics. <laughs> An awful partner birthday were married this afternoon at his home. Oh, oh, oh Lord. Oh, there's a mutton Jeff theme that there's a Jeff. <laughs> Mr. Cortland's niece, Mrs. Dixie Martin, and his nephew Will Cortland stood up for the couple. As Mrs. Purdy's son, Thaddeus J. Martin, gave her away. Sis. Officiating with blah, 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 from blah, blah, blah. The guests included prominent citizens, blah, 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 blah. Mr. Langley Wallingford, Dr. and Mrs. Joseph Martin, Dr. and Mrs. Charles Tyler III. <laughs> John of Dick. Oh, Ouija, you fancy yourself some hot to me, don't you? Huh? And you, Mr. Thaddeus J. for Jack Snipe Martin, turn your back. I punctuated your pappy's lung. Now I got a bone to pick with you, Beauregard. Ignore it. Thank goodness for answering machines. It's not broken, is it? No, I forgot to turn it on. Oh, Tad! Oh, you should get it, though. Maybe it's a job. You're right. Ah! Well, look at it this way. It's important whoever was a callback. <laughs> what was that? I think you were there. I was here. <laughs> it comes back to me. Come here, come here. Oh, I love his arm. His arms love you. <laughs> It's not that funny. What? What is it? No. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just thought it's something. My arms are a laugh. No, no. Opal and Uncle Palmer and your mother, they're really married. Yeah. That is kind of strange, isn't it? Yeah. There's no figuring love, honey. No. Mm -mm. It was a beautiful wedding. Though. Yeah, it was a nice wedding. Yeah, and they'll be very, very happy together. Sure. What's the matter with you? What are you thinking about? Nothing. You don't want to know. <laughs> his initials are BC. I can't help it. I'm sorry. Every time I think of Berniker pulling off those guards, I just want to wring his neck. Look, Ted, I did not expect lifelong protection, okay? I didn't. And and maybe, you know, what they said was right. Maybe, maybe he's out of the country. Maybe. You don't think so? Let me put it this way, I'm just glad that Palmer was willing to pay for full-time protection. I'm going to sleep a lot easier, and I know Joey's going. Let's just not like talk about him, okay? Okay, please, do you mind? You're right. Hey. What? Yes? What do you think Palmer and Opal are doing right about now? I can't. What do you think? Oh, come on. Oh. Poor Opal. She was so worried about tonight. About what? What do you think? Well, you know, I mean, that thing with that guy, Clem, you know? What, she thought she was, she was afraid she was going to love him to death? <laughs> no. Like, oh, she, she, did she tell you this? She actually... She was very concerned about it. It's not funny. Oh, I think it's hysterical. It's I think we should funny. file it under too horrifying to contemplate it, too compelling to ignore. <laughs> I mean, think about it. Right now, Palmer Cortland is being her little love stud, and <laughs> she's being his little sex fool. <laughs> Poodle. Mm, they say, like what? mother, like son. Oh, oh, you're Come so bad. Me, 
show me. <laughs> I'll look. I'll I'll do. I know you're no, not. No, no, I'm, I'm going to get it. No, you get it. You'll be too nice. Oh. I know I should have called, but I have to see Dizzy. Bye. Nobody home. Well, just as well. Uh, weren't wise giving that boy a call in a while. <laughs> no sense in getting your curiosity piqued. You're curious enough as is. But have no fear, Beauregard. We shall meet again. <laughs> I got me a bullet. Your name on it. Basically, I'm out in the cold. What about Skye? It's her fault I'm in this fix. Come on, I thought you just said you loved her. I do, but I begged her not to say anything. Well, I mean, how could she not? What Adam is doing is absolutely terrible. And, and I think it took a lot of courage for her to go and tell Natalie. Thanks to that courage, I'm cut off. I'm sorry. And I've lost Skye. Well, it's none of my business, but whose fault is that? Look, Will, maybe you should just go to her, okay? I mean, go make up, you know, there's and apologize. No, there's no point. Well, I thought you just said you loved her. So I don't have anything to offer her. Offer your love. You've read too many romance novels. See, when you love somebody, you want to offer them a whole world. Not everybody needs the world, though, Will, not Sky, anyway. Well, I understand, and I sympathize. You realize none of this would happen if your uncle had stayed out of his life. Ted, don't start with me, but okay? We know your that's... uncle can't stay out of anybody's life. I mean, your sister and I have been through this many times. I know, I know, I know, and that's why I, I was hoping you could help me out. Me? Yeah, you can talk to Uncle Palmer. Oh, I can't talk to Palmer. It's his honeymoon, for crying out loud. No, but when, when he gets back, you could, you, could, you could tell him that I should be able to date anybody that I please, and that my personal life and my performance at work, has, they're not, they have nothing to do with each other, which is... Would you do that for me, kiddo? Look, Will, I really want to help you. I mean, I really do, but there's just so much more to consider here than just your romance. Dixie, please. Uh, I'm, I'm going to give you kids a couple minutes alone. I, I need to get some air. Ted, you sure you don't mind? Not at all, not at all. Walk would do me good anyway. Okay, thanks. Hey, 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 though, if you stop by the case. Yeah, I know. Pick up a plate of ice cream. Then you better make it chocolate. You know what they say about chocolate, don't you? Yes, I do. Uh, well, you'll go great with that cake anyway. Okay, you got it, sweets. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. I love you. Well? <gasps> well, about Uncle Palmer. I'm only asking to talk to him. Are you still planning to uh, take over his business? Now, what does that have to do with anything? Because, I mean, I'm not going to exactly go rushing to your defense if you still are, if that's still your goal. So you got to tell me, you got to promise me that you'll give up that idea. Okay, You've been carrying this hatred for far too long. And look, look, if Mama were still alive, she'd be the first to point that out. If it weren't for him, Mama would still be alive. And how do you, you don't know what you'd feel. I do know that she loved Uncle Palmer. And I know that Uncle Palmer made a lot of mistakes and he tried to make up for neglecting her. you got to admit he's done a lot for us. Oh, no, he has. Have you forgotten what it was like back then? What it was like growing up in Pigeon Hollow? He gave you a job, an education. He sent you to college. He brought Lainey to Pine Valley. He's educating her, too. He's even accepted Ted and me. What, what, what do you just want? What do you expect me to do? Just, just, just forget how he treated her? Look, you can't change the past. And you can't bring Mama back. Uncle Palmer has made mistakes. All right, and he's admitted them, and he's tried to make up for them. But you, you, you can't change things. And, and you got to stop beating this whole thing to death. Yeah, well, maybe you can, but I can't. Well, if you think revenge and hatred would make Mama happy, then you don't remember her. And if you want me to help you with Uncle Palmer, then you have to let go of the past. So you've turned your back on me, too. Fine. Yes. Will, I haven't turned my back on you. Will! Dick! 
Good idea. I'm full of good ideas. I noticed. Mm. You sure you don't want your own? Mm-mm. I'd much rather share. I think it's good with you and Will. So, so. I think he went back to the Valley Inn. Well, I feel sorry for him. If things are really over between him and Sky. I just never should have kept it a secret from Uncle Palmer. I mean, <clears throat> there's one thing that I've learned. Is you got to stand up for the people that you love. That's one thing that I've learned this past year. Yeah, right. I feel kind of bad, though, too, you know. I'm more so happy. Poor Will and Sky. What are you talking about? Don't you think we deserve to be happy after everything we've been through? No. I think we deserve to be absolutely rapturous. <laughs> Come here, Mrs. Martin. What are you doing? Do you know what I tell our son every night before he falls off to sleep? You tell him that you're taking him on the Sleepy Town Express. Right, well, it's too late for you because you've already <laughs> missed that train. What are you... Ah! But I think it's time. But you took a little ride on the Loveland Express. Oh, take me, take me. I've got it! Hello? Yes, I'd like to speak with Dixie, please. Um, she doesn't live here anymore. She does? No. Oh, well, <laughs> I thank you for your time. Excuse my calling. Oh, I might know that you'd see that right away. Back to that no-count, Martin. <laughs> 